Hi, I'm Gloria Keith with Action Speaks. Today, uh, July the 9th, 2012, I am going to introduce or present to you some facts written in reference to uh, the book that I am about to publish, which will go international. Uh, and that is Every Child Born Gifted is the title of the book. So remember that name, Every Child Born Gifted. But I want to give you some updates, some facts on it uh, in, in person or here on this video. Um, the most recent national report uh, comes from, uh, extends from 2004. Uh, October 1st, 2004 was the publication date, and the title of the research and study, A Nation Deceived, colon, How Schools Hold Back America's Brightest Students. Um, and this book is written by Nicholas Colangelo. Susan G. Asolan, uh, Maraca U. M. Gross. Oh, those are the three authors of the research and study of 2004: A Nation Deceived, How Chil How Schools Hold Back America's Brightest Students. Let me give you a little introduction, then I'm only going to give you a timeline as to gifted, um, identifying or educating the gifted in America. A Nation to See, Volume 1 and 2. For the first time ever, a two-volume report, A Nation Deceived, how children I want to say children hold back, but no, it's how schools hold back America's brightest students shows why America's schools routinely avoid academic acceleration. Based on research by Dr. Nicholas Colangelo and Dr. Susan Asolin of the University of Iowa, along with Dr. Marco or Maraca Gross. I may be may not be uh, pronouncing these names correctly. It depends on the language differences. Of the University of New South Wales in Australia, the research finally brings together the wealth of information available on acceleration. The first volume synthesizes key findings about academic acceleration from five decades of research. The second volume showcases chapters written by 17 leading scholars <clears throat> are covering topics such as entering school early, grade skipping, high school challenges, advanced placement courses, and how adults who were accelerated in school feel about their experiences now. As the report's authors state, every sentence in the volume is pulled from the research of America's leading education experts. A Nation Deceive supports the idea that acceleration is the most effective intervention for high capable students. Acceleration is defined by the authors as an educational intervention that moves students through an educational program at a faster than usual rate. It means matching the level, complexity, and pace of the curriculum with the readiness of the student. 
the acceleration philosophy can be applied across academic, emotional, and social categories and can be applied in the short and long term. Now I want to share with you from the study, A Nation Deceived, a brief history. At the turn of the century, of the 20th century, advancements in education and psychology brought empirical and scientific credibility to the field of gifted education. The early studies of giftedness in the 1920s and 30s evolved from research on mental inheritance, subnormal children, construction of instruments to measure both the sub and supernormal, and the realization that graded schools could not adequately meet the needs of all children, which is the philosophy of public education to meet the needs of every child. Pioneers such as Lewis Terman and Letter Hollingworth spearheaded the movement and conducted some of the first widely published research studies on gifted children. However, in the early days, of course, uh, black Americans were not a part of the history because um, selfish and greedy men and women are traditional oppression, oppressors, as we call them, um, uh, shouted the philosophy that blacks are inferior to whites and still today that is um, on the minds of some of our uh, most popular educators and of course um, and I'm, I'm speaking now away from the study I'm giving my opinions um, on my research and study uh, for every child born gifted. Of course, there is some who are challenging that um, my, my book, the title of my book, is a generalization that cannot be accepted, as you will learn more in as we detail the findings and the studies um, around giftedness. I shall move on to the next paragraph. Toward the close of the 20th century, federal monies from the Jacob Javit Gifted and Talented Student Education Act funded such entities as the National Research Center on the Gifted and Talented and provided grant money for gifted research and program programming. A Nation at Risk, of course, a study in 1983, and National Excellence, a case for developing America's talent, 1993, reports issued by the federal government highlighted the missed opportunities to identify and serve gifted students nationally. In turn, a call was made for additional research and programming in the field of gifted education. The issuance of national standards by the National Association for Gifted Children also helped solidify the field's intent and provide school districts around the country with a set of programming criteria. Published in 2004, A Nation Deceived reported on the advantages of acceleration for gifted children 
which illustrated America's inability to properly meet the needs of its most able students despite the overwhelming research supporting acceleration. And of course, I was one of those students who were uh, skipped or uh, teachers and parents actually uh, challenge that one way or the other. Uh, should the, the question came up, should the child be skipped because he is so far ahead of the other, of her, of, of her peers. And of course, um, we as children don't understand that. So I like the teacher that I had and asked not to be skipped at that time. But later on, I was skipped a grade and so were my own children. All right. The 20th, the 21st century represents a new era where the possibilities are limitless and the future for gifted and talented children hopefully will be a national priority. And that is what is expected today in 2012. But let me share with you the timeline of key dates in gifted and talented education um, as written in the volumes of A Nation Deceived. We will start with a timeline of key dates in gifted and talented education, 1868. Of course, I wasn't around, and most of you, if, if any of you, um, none of you were around in 1868. If we do still have some living, that is a miracle and a gift within itself. But 1868, William Torrey Harris, superintendent of public schools for St. Louis, institutes the earliest systematic effort in public schools to educate gifted students. Of course, again, blacks were not included uh, as a part of that search. 1869, Francis Galton, uh, seminal work, Heredi Hereditary Genius, is published indicating the intelligence. That intelligence was passed through successive generations. His biographical study of over 400 British men throughout history leads him to conclude through statistical methods that intelligence was derived from heredity and national selection. Again, black Americans were not a part of this research. 1901, Worcester, Massachusetts opened the first special school for gifted children. Again, black Americans were not a part of this research. 1905, French researchers, Binet, you've heard of the, the, the evaluation for uh, gifted or special needs students, is the Stanford Binet. Uh, they, um, these te this test is used to establish whether one is uh, highly intelligent or not. Of course, there are still questions and challenges circulating. But 1905, French researchers Binet and Simon developed a series of tests, the Binet-Simon, to identify children of inferior see, intelligence for the purpose of separating them from normally functioning children for placement in special classrooms. Their notion of mental age revolutionizes the science of psychological testing by capturing intelligence in a single numerical outcome. Again, black Americans, uh, if they were uh, active participants of this research, uh, it is not noted. 1908, Henry Goddard. Goddard 
studies in French in France with Binet and is introduced to Binet Simon measurement scales. Excuse me, my tongue is slipping. Perhaps I need some water, but let's move on because we're not going to get to all of this today. We will share more of the timeline uh, for uh, gifted education um, throughout the week. Subsequently, he ferishes, he ferries the test back to American in order to translate it into English and disseminate it to American educators and psychologists. Again, black Americans, as do noted, were not a part of the research. 1916, Louis Terman, the father of the gifted education movement, according to the Nation Deceived, publishes the Stanford Binet, which again is the evaluation for testing intelligence most widely um, or more popular than any others. <clears throat> publishes the Stanford Binet, Forever Changing Intelligence Testing and the Face of American Education. Again, black Americans were not a part or noted part of this research. 1917, the United States entry into World War I necessitates the mobilization of a large scale army. The Army Alpha and Beta were created and administered to over one million recruits, further legitim legitimatizing intelligence testing in both academia and with the general public. Now that's all I'm going to share with you today, but I will share more of the timeline for gifted education as presented by the national study, uh, Nation Deceived, how schools hold our brightest students back. Thank you for listening. This is Gloria Keith, or for <coughs> Gloria Keith with Action Speaks. God bless you.